Hi everyone, in this video I'll be encrypting my C drive using Veracrypt. Veracrypt is a free open source disk encryption application that will allow me to securely encrypt my system drive. Veracrypt will allow me full control on selecting the encryption algorithm, the hash, and PIM. Because there are more options, it could be considered difficult to use, but it's actually quite straightforward. So let's get started. So going to veracrypt.io and then downloads. And I'm going to download for Windows. And then you'll have to download the installer. If you download the portable version and try to use it, it won't work. This is what you'll see. So I'm going to download the executable here. Once it's downloaded, go into your folder, select the executable, and open it up. Yes. Select your language. OK. I accept the license terms, next, and I'm going to install it, next, and I'm going to use the default directory and the default options here, install. Okay, it has been installed, finish. And it recommends to read the tutorial first, I'm going to hit no. And here it gives a warning, Windows Fast Startup is enabled and is known to cause issues when working with Veracut volumes. It is advised to disable it for better security and usability. So I'm going to disable it. Yes. And your computer must be restarted. Do you want to restart it now? Yes. Log in. All right, my computer restarted and I'm back. I'm going to open up Veracrypt. And I'm going to create a volume. And there's three options here. I'm going to be selecting the third option, encrypt the system partition or entire system drive. This will encrypt the partition drive where Windows is installed, so my C drive. Anyone who wants to gain access and use the system, read and write files, etc., will need to enter the correct password each time that Windows boots. Optionally, it creates a hidden system. I'm going to hit next. Yes. And so there's two options here for system encryption, normal and hidden. And select this option if you merely want to encrypt the system partition or the entire system drive, which is what I want to do. Next. And here it's asking if you want to encrypt the Windows system partition or if you want to encrypt the whole drive. So to give some context, if I go into disk management, start disk management. And then we see my disk here, disk zero, and I just have the C drive here. I don't have any other drives, for example, like a D drive, E drive, etc. It's just one drive here. So going back into Veracrypt. So this is just going to encrypt the C drive here. And then next. And here it's asking the number of operating systems, if it's just a single boot, if it's just Windows, or if it's a multi-boot, if there's, for example, Windows and Mac, or Windows and Linux. So for me, it's just a single boot, just Windows. Next. And here it's asking for the encryption algorithm that I want to use. So you got various different encryptions available. So in this video, I'm going to be using the default AES. And in the hash algorithm, I'll be using the default SHA-512. And then next. And here it asks you to put in a strong password, as this is the password you will use when your computer starts up to decrypt the C drive so it can boot Windows. And here it's asking if you want to use PIM. PIM is Personal Iterations Multiplier, which controls how many times the password is hashed during mounting, as the higher the number means more computation is required to test each password guess, so it slows down brute force attacks. And it adds an extra layer of security since the attacker must know this value as well. And if you don't use the number, Veracrypt will use the default. In this case, for system encryption, it's 98. So if you were to select it, and then next. And then here it asks you to enter in the PIM value. And if you don't want to use a PIM value, you can just leave it as empty or zero. Next. And here it's going to collect random data and move your mouse as randomly as possible within this window. The longer you move it, the better. This significantly increases the cryptographic strength of the encryption keys, and then click Next to continue. So I'm going to click Next. And here are the keys that have been generated. The keys, salt, and other data have been successfully generated. If you want to generate new keys, click back and then Next. Otherwise, click Next to continue. 
next. And here I mentioned about the rescue disk. So before you encrypt a partition, you must create a VeraCrypt rescue disk, which serves the following purposes. If the VeraCrypt bootloader master key or other critical data gets damaged, the VeraCrypt rescue disk allows you to restore it. Note, however, that you will still have to enter the correct password then. If Windows gets damaged and cannot start, the VeraCrypt rescue disk will allow you to permanently decrypt the partition before Windows starts. And the VeraCrypt rescue disk will contain a backup of your present EFI bootloader and will allow you to restore if necessary. The VeraCrypt rescue disk zip image will be created in the location specified below. And so this is a very important file. So it has everything that you need if you have run into an issue. And it's going to make you create a rescue disk using a USB key. And you can use this option to skip the rescue disk verification, but it's recommended not to do so and to actually create it before continuing on. So I'm gonna hit next. So the rescue disk zip image has been created and stored in the file. See users can detect documents for a rescue disk and you'll need to extract it to a USB stick that is formatted as FAT, FAT32. Important note that the zip file must be extracted directly to the root of the USB stick. For example, if the letter of the USB stick is E, then extracting the zip file should create a folder E colon slash EFI on the USB stick. After you create the rescue disk, click next to verify that it's been correctly created. So I'm going to open up Explorer. So here's my documents folder and there's the rescue disk. So I'm going to extract it, extract all, extract. And so here are the extracted contents, and there's a boot directory, and there's a VeraCrypt directory that contains everything that I need if I need to rescue my system partition. And now I'm going to plug in a USB drive. All right, my USB drive has been plugged in, and I'm going to go back out, and I'm going to copy this folder, the EFI folder, go into my D drive, and then paste. And I'm going to go back into VeraCrypt. I'm going to hit next. And then the rescue disk has been verified, so that's good. And now I'm going to remove it. I'm going to hit next. This here is about the white mode. So when encrypting the drive, VeraCrypt needs to move and encrypt the existing data. But during this process, there may still be traces of previously deleted data on the disk. So white mode gives the option to securely erase that free space by writing random data on it, preventing all deleted data to be recovered. So there is a one pass of random data, a three pass, a seven pass, and 35 pass. The greater the number of passes, the longer it'll take to encrypt. So if you want a mix of both speed and security, a one pass provides a good balance. For this video demonstration, I'm gonna keep it simple and use none. And then next. And then here it's gonna do a system encryption pretest. So it's gonna to check to make sure that everything is okay before actually doing the encryption. And this will include having me enter in my password for Windows starts. So it says here the following device will be modified, drive zero. That is correct. And I'm going to hit test. And so in this window here, it gives some important notes about what to do if you run into any issues, such as, for example, what to do if your Windows can't start. And you can go through it. And you can copy it and print it out. I'm going to hit OK. And so here my computer must be restarted and then it's going to ask for the password. And here it's asking for my password, so I'm going to put it in. And here it's asking for the PIN and leave empty for default, so I didn't put in the PIN, so I'm just hit enter. And so it works and it's booting into Windows now. I'm going to log in. And once you're back in, VeraCrypt will pop up and it says pre-test completed, so that's good. And then here it gives a warning. Please note that if the power supply is suddenly interrupted while encrypting existing data in place or when the operating system crashes due to a software error or hardware malfunction, while VeraCrypt is encrypting existing data in place, portion of the data will be corrupted or lost. Therefore, before you start encrypting, please make sure that you have backup copies of the files you want to encrypt. If you do not, please back up the files now. You can click defer, backup the files, then run VeraCrypt again anytime and select system, resume interrupted process to start encrypting.
So ensure that you have a backup of your system or any files before doing this. And then when ready, click encrypt to start encrypting. And in this window, it gives instructions about how and when to use the VeraCrypt rescue disk after encrypting. And so you can go through it. I'm going to hit OK. Yes. And so now it's going to encrypt. This will take some time depending on how much data has to encrypt and how fast is your computer. All right, the system partition drive has been successfully encrypted. If there are non-system VeraCrypt volumes that you need to have mounted automatically every time Windows starts, you can set it up by mounting each of them and selecting favorites, add mounted volumes to system favorites. So in this case, I don't have any other volumes. It's just the system volume that I have here that was encrypted. So I'm just hit OK and then finish. And now I'm going to reboot my computer. All right, and we can see that there's a password prompt. So in order to boot into Windows, I'll need to decrypt my system volume and I'll need the password. And if I put in the wrong password, or if I put in the wrong PIM, in this case, I'm just gonna leave it as empty. And then it's gonna say authorization failed, wrong password, PIM, or hash. And then now I'm gonna put in the correct password. And then PIN. In my case, it will set as empty for the default and authorizing, and it's successful. I'm going to log in. And so it works as expected. And that's it. That's how you can encrypt your C drive using Veracrypt. I hope this video was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.